Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault. Once again, I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is on another awesome Noveski rifle. This is the Infidel. So this is a 13.7 inch barreled AR-15 that is pen and welded to 16.1 inches. Therefore, it is not an NFA firearm, but it's kind of like a short barreled rifle. But with that big old muzzle device, it makes it legal where it is a non-restricted item. Yeah, it's just kind of a way around that silly law that we have called the National Firearms Act. Now, I have shot many of these Noveski rifles in the past, and I have to say they have truly impressed me. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of some of the concepts that Noveski puts into their rifles, such as making them out of billet lowers and uppers, but I will tell you that every Noveski I have ever shot, as I said, has impressed me. It has been exceptionally accurate and exceptionally reliable. And so they've always kind of won me over. I just kind of go, eh, maybe I'm not the biggest fan of their styling, but I'm expecting this rifle to run, perform, and be very accurate, just like all of the other firearms from this company that I have reviewed have been. So before I dive into the things that I like and don't like and get some range time on this, as always, I wanna thank the people that make these videos possible. First and foremost is the person that owns this awesome rifle who linked it to the channel for review. His name is D, and he has one amazing collection. So thank you so much, D, once again, for lending an awesome gun for me to review. I always wanna thank my Patreons, as always, because through their monthly donation and support they help keep the lights on around here i could not do this without them and their support so thank you so much patreons and if you want to join my patreon for as little as one dollar a month and see all these videos early there's a link in the description and as always the person that makes these range reports financially feasible because i go through so much ammo and he provides that my good friend mark from brownworks and Brownworks has been a longtime sponsor of me here at the Texas Gun Vault. And let me tell you, he makes some of the best grips in the world. Mark is an artist and a craftsman. He's always coming up with new and innovative products. Every grip he makes is one of a kind. His customer service is off the charts. He makes grips out of exotic woods. He can apply custom textures, custom colors, custom finishes. He even makes his own laminate woods. But I know that you're watching this video because you want to see some awesome range footage of this Noveski. Well, let me tell you, he even makes wood panel grips for guns like, yes, AR-15s and modern sporting rifles, as well as offering services like laser engraving magazines, like PMAGs for these awesome rifles. So if you have a custom logo or a custom engraving that you would like to see on a PMAG, he can put it on there. He can also put those on grips. Yeah, anything you can imagine he can make, and he loves to always come up with great one-off grips for his customers. So I'm gonna put a link in the comment section below, and I want you guys to go over there and check out his website. See all that he has to offer. And anything you can imagine, I tell you, he can make it. So make sure you contact him. Tell him what you're looking for, what you want, and I know that he'll hook you up. And when you contact him, please tell him, the Texas Gun Vault sent you. All right, so once again, let's talk about what this rifle is. This is the Noveski Infidel, but unfortunately you wouldn't know that because it is not marked on the gun. The receiver just says it is the model N4. I kind of wish they would mark the Infidel somewhere on this like they do their other models, but it is a 13.7 inch barrel that is pin and welded to 16 inches with that blast deflector up there. Now, let's talk about the things that I like and don't like, and as always, I wanna talk about the things that I like first. And the first thing is, it's a Noveski. You guys know the Noveski name. And these things are very sought after and very highly respected rifles. And as I mentioned in the opening of this video, every one of the Noveskis that I have ever shot have really impressed me. They might not be my favorite brand for a number of reasons, but there is absolutely no doubt that the quality of these guns is off the chart. They have always been reliable, they've always been exceptionally accurate, and there is definitely a cool factor to them. 
As I said, they do make some of these guns out of billet versus forged metal, and for me it makes the guns a little bit heavy, but that allows them to have this really cool design on the uppers and lowers, but the quality is just off the chart. I also really like their naming conventions. Even though they don't mark this one as the Infidel, they have other cute names like the Space Invader and the Afghan. And I do like that. It makes their guns a little bit unique. They're not just a number and some letters. And it makes them a little bit more personalized. And yeah, you can have a little bit of fun with that. The other company that does that is Q. And you always kind of laugh at their names of like their suppressors, like the Nelson and the Half Nelson and the Honey Bat when it comes to some of their guns. Yeah, those cute names, I kind of like them, and I think Noveski chooses some nice ones. But getting back to the quality of this gun, the fit and finish is absolutely amazing. I mentioned I'm not a huge fan of the billet stuff, but let me tell you, the way that this handguard fits on that upper receiver, everything lines up absolutely perfect. Even the fit between the upper and lower, you don't see any gap in there. There's absolutely no play. This thing is just finished absolutely perfect. And I do know they offer it in four or five different colors, including Sniper Gray, there's an FDE, and I think kind of an olive drab, but I'm not sure what they call that. They all have different names. But yeah, depending on the color you want, they also offer them in those. I'm also a big fan of this handguard because it has M-Lock everywhere. Not only at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock position, but also at, I guess, what would be the 2, the 5, maybe the 8, and the 10 or the 11 o'clock position. So you get tons of options. Many rails, even on high-end ARs that I have reviewed, you only get the ones on the side. So you only get a quad rail option. This handguard is also a very nice size. It's not too thin where your hand is so close to the barrel, I feel like you're going to get a lot of heat transfer but it's also not too wide where it's too big and bulky. It's just the right size. It has all the M-Lock slots that you would possibly want. You can mount tons of accessories, and of course you got the rail on top. I think it is a very well-designed rail and handguard that is mounted very solidly on this upper receiver. Then when it comes to the controls of this rifle, everything is ambi on both sides. You can see you have a bolt release, magazine release, and the safety selector switch. And you have all of that over here in the typical places you would find on an AR-15. So the manual of arms is going to be very familiar to a lot of people. But if you're a lefty, you have tons of options as well. The last thing I noticed here on the workbench that I like is the trigger. Now, I have to research and see what triggers they put in these. But in pretty much all the Noveskis I've ever shot, they just come from the factory really well tuned. So let me go ahead and show you you what this trigger looks like. Let me go ahead and safety check the gun, ensure there's no ammunition in it. And now let's take a look at this trigger pull here. So here is the initial trigger pull. It doesn't really have much take up at all. And man, that is one crisp break. It's not too light. And then when you have the reset, very loud audible click and you are right back at that wall. That is one of the nicest AR triggers I have ever felt. And I like the fact it's not too light, so I would put this in the realm of a duty trigger more than that of a target trigger, but I think it could do both applications really, really well. But now let's talk about the three things about this gun that I don't like. I've already kind of mentioned one in the past, and it's kind of a personal preference, and that is the uppers and lowers are made of billet versus forged aluminum. That allows them to have this really cool design on them, but the gun is a little bit more bulky. If you look at the fencing for the detents and the springs, everything's a little bit thicker. I'm not really a big fan of that, and I feel like it makes the receivers a little bit more bulky and heavier than really what they have to be. But once again, there's a trade-off. You do get these really cool designs, but 
you have that little bit of extra weight and mass. And some people are gonna like that, some people aren't. And maybe I'm just a little bit biased because many of the billet receivers that I have built guns from in the past haven't always been in spec, but the ones that are forged have always been great. But I know Noveski is a top tier company and I've never seen a problem with any of their billet receivers. So this is more of just a personal preference. The other thing I'm not really a big fan of is this blast deflector. Now I know some people love this thing, but for me, having that gigantic opening there, it kind of reminds me of like those old Elmer Fudd cartoons where he's using a blunderbuss. Yeah, why do I need an opening that big on the front of my gun? It it kind of looks like maybe it's a silencer, but it's not. I know these blast deflectors work pretty darn good. It keeps all the gas and the flash going down range and not back at you. They function great, but for me, they've always looked a little bit goofy and I haven't liked them. I always prefer a standard flash hider or maybe a muzzle brake on the right gun, but for the most part, I'm a fan of the traditional flash hider. Even the ones with the QD attachments for suppressors, not a big fan of these blast deflectors. Now, I'm sure you can probably order this with a different muzzle device, but online, I can only find them with this device on them. I think it just looks a little bit on the goofy side. It's like a modern blunderbuss, and besides having that blast deflection, having that big opening at the end, as I said, it just looks a little bit Bit odd, especially when you're shooting 5.56. Five, and the last complaint I have is definitely something that I can change. It is not a deal breaker. And once again, it goes into the realm of being a personal preference is that this has a 45 degree safety selector on it. I prefer the ones that are 90 degrees. So let me show you here. That's safe and that's fire. So obviously it has a shorter throw. I know that is something that I can personally change if this was my rifle, but I like to have rifles come from the factory exactly the way that I want them to be. Maybe it's just I'm more familiar with the 90 degree ones. The 45s I know are all the rage, but it's just a personal preference. And obviously that is not a deal breaker whatsoever. And I am being ultra picky, but when you're gonna spend this type of money on a rifle, you definitely wanna know everything about it. All right, so I've talked a lot about this rifle, the things I like and don't like. So let's get this thing to the range. And as always, I wanna start with just a single magazine at about 10 yards. I wanna see how this thing shoot, what the recoil is like, how the trigger is. If I discover anything about this gun that I like or don't like, that I didn't notice here on the workbench. Just check its reliability before we go out to a little bit further distance and shoot it a little bit faster. So here we go at the range, 10 yards, one magazine, and these are my initial thoughts. And I honestly think this trigger is set up to run really fast. I already showed you the reset and the trigger pull. I shot that a little bit faster than I normally do on the first magazine because it just wants to be run fast. And that means this gun is a lot of fun, but I'm gonna have to work on my discipline and shooting it a little bit slower. The grouping was a little bit low. I do have to adjust this aim point a little bit, but. I'm gonna do that off camera. The only thing about this that did surprise me is the gun seems to have a little bit more muzzle flip or maybe a little bit more recoil than your standard AR. Not really sure. So we'll have to see how that affects when I start to shoot this thing faster and at longer distances. It's not much, it doesn't hurt. It's just after shooting so many AR-15s, you're used to a certain recoil impulse. This one just has a little bit more and a little bit more muzzle flip than anything else. So, all right, so now we're gonna set up the target at twice the distance. Now at 20 yards, I'm still gonna be standing. I'm gonna shoot for the center of the next target, see how I do, and if I discover anything else about this gun, that I like or don't like and to continue to see if this gun continues to function perfectly.
And I still think I'm shooting that just a little bit too fast, and that's why that grouping opened up a little bit. I do have to say the gun is very well balanced from a weight perspective, and it seems to be very well gassed. As you could see, I had very consistent ejections that are very strong and always go off into about the four o'clock position. I never had any irregularities with that, and I don't even smell the gas back in my face. So this thing is very, very well balanced and well gassed, and the gas block is non-adjustable, so they probably spend a lot of time when it comes to these barrels and making sure that they are well tuned. So I am very, very impressed with that. All right, so the next test I'm going to do is the bench rest test, and I know I am only at 25 yards. This is just the range that I can review these at. And so at 25 yards, I'm going to expect exceptional accuracy, but I always get that out of every one of these Noveski. So here we go, another magazine, 25 yards, bench resting, and I'm going for the tightest group I possibly can. You see, and I told you, that is what every Noveski shoots like. Take a look at that grouping. That is about as tight as I can get. And this thing is awesome, especially with a 13.7 inch barrel. That is awesome and what I have come to expect from Noveski. And that's another reason why these guns always impress me so much. And taking my time on that test, it really goes back to how awesome this trigger is. I can shoot this trigger fast, I can tell you it wants to run fast, but when you take your time, that reset is absolutely perfect. Very tactile, very audible, and you are right there at the wall. There is no creep in this thing whatsoever. One of the nicest triggers I have ever shot. The only thing I noticed about this gun, bench resting it, that I didn't like is once again, that recoil impulse and that muzzle flip just a little bit meant I had to readjust the gun on my bag a little bit more than I normally do. On most ARs, it just stays solid. This one just has a little bit more recoil. I'm not 100% sure why that is. After all, it's a standard AR-15 mechanism. It just comes back into your shoulder a little bit more. But that's not a big deal whatsoever. All right, so now the the next test I want to do is the quick magazine change. Now, I did notice here on the workbench, this rifle has something I absolutely love. When I push that magazine release button, that magazine flies right out of there exceptionally fast. It drops out of that gun. Now, sometimes on these billet lowers, they're always milled a little bit too tight, but Noveski did not do that. And with this PMAG, it just falls out of this gun. It gets out of there really, really fast, which I think is gonna help with the magazine change. So here we go. I'm gonna load up two magazines, shoot this gun as fast as I can, drop the mag, get a new one in there, get the gun back in action and see how fast I can do it. Now, I am not a competition shooter, so if I can do this fast, Fast. Someone like you that probably trains doing this can do it even faster. So let's see how the Noveski performs.
And that might be one of the fastest mag changes I've ever done on an AR. This thing is awesome. And this magwell, which is nice and flared, makes the reinsertion really quick. The trigger, also exceptionally fast. The only thing that seemed to slow me down and affect the rhythm of the trigger pull is just that muzzle rise. I was also not as happy with the grouping when I shoot this thing fast. As I said, it just has a little bit more muzzle flip than your standard AR. So I think I would prefer maybe either a muzzle brake or a flash hider on this. I think that might work a little bit better than this blast deflector. So the next thing I want to do is the most enjoyable part of all of these range reports for me. And of course that is the mag dump. I just want to shoot this thing fast and have some fun with it. I know it annoys other people at the range, but I always warn them I'm about to do this so they know to expect it. But here we go. One complete magazine dumped as fast as I possibly can. And then I'll come back to you and give you my final thoughts. And I really think this gun is designed for speed. I can shoot this thing really fast. It's just that extra recoil that this gun seems to have. While all of my shots were on target, they weren't as tight as I normally can shoot an AR-15 at that distance in a mag dump situation. But this trigger is really, really fine tuned. It could be a great target trigger and a great practical trigger. I am very impressed with it. It blends that balance between both those functions really well. And that is just so much fun. It's a very well gassed and very well balanced firearm. So what are my final thoughts on the Noveski Infidel? This thing, like all the Noveskis, exceeds my expectations. I always pick one of these things up and think, eh, I think it's going to be okay. But then I always come away going, wow, those things are really nice. In fact, one of the guns that's kind of on my short list is the Noveski Space Invader. I had a chance to review one of D's, and he owns this gun as well. And that Space Invader was so much fun. It's chambered in nine millimeter. That thing really really was well built. And this thing is just the same. The fit, the finish, the function, the reliability, the balance, the trigger, everything about this gun impresses me. And I definitely think for the high price you're going to pay for a Noveski, you get a very, very nice gun. And I think it is worth every single penny. I'm always impressed with these things. And I think I just need to accept the fact that a Noveski does need to be on my short list of firearms in the future because these things are just awesome. It really, really impressed me. My only issues with this, once again, are the blast deflector and it has a little bit more muzzle flip and a little bit more recoil than what I would want in an AR. But maybe there's some components that I could change in this that could fix that. But the gun is accurate. It's fun to shoot. It's reliable, well-balanced, well-gassed. Everything about this is awesome. So it's everything I have come to expect from a Noveski. So on my star system, how would I rate the Noveski Infidel? Well, 4.5 out of 5 stars. Yeah, a great, great review. And it just has a little bit too much recoil for me to shoot this thing fast and accurate. But that's the only issue I really have. And of course, I would like to have that blast deflector turned into something else. But that's just a personal preference. I know a lot of you guys are going to absolutely love that. So what do you guys think? Do you guys own a Noveski personally? Have you ever shot one? What do you think? And do your experiences mirror mine? I would love to know because this is just one one awesome rifle. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching.